Well, welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition of Choir Boys Cutler Outdoors. A cold steel rendition. Been a minute since we've done one of those, if you will. Hey, before we get too far into the video, 22 veterans a day at one point in this country took their own lives. That number is going down. There's a lot of work to do. Any number above zero is unacceptable. Vets, I just want you to know we love you. You have a place here. We back to blue over here. We support Leo. How do you do that, Scab? Because it's not real popular right now. Well, one, I don't give a shit. And two, we don't break the law. Finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. So today, we're doing the Gurkha Kukri Plus in 4034 stainless steel. Now, guys, I love that steel. My uh, Nomad EDC that's on me every day is in 4034. It's an awesome steel. Let me give you some specs. The blade length is 12 inches. Overall length is 17 inches. The weight is 24.3 ounces. Blade thickness, this is a big one, 5 sixteenths. The handle is Cray-X and it's 5 inches long. Now, let me say this. I love cold steel, but I want everybody to listen to me very carefully. I'm going to address two groups right here. The Kukri purist, I am well aware this is not a real Kukri. Fully aware. You know how I'm aware? Because I talk to actual Gurkhas at least once every other month as I order real Kukris from Nepal. So thank you. No need to tell me that. Fully aware. To Cold Steel fanboys, I probably have more Cold Steel than you do. I love Cold Steel. If there's anything that I don't like about it, it's nothing personal on you. I know you like to take it that way but it is not. So, having said all that, let me say this. Uh, Matthew Culbertson has a YouTube channel and a really, really good channel. I'm going, I put a link to one of his video, videos in the community post. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Here's the deal, guys. This thing came with a very robust edge. Uh, edge bevels were nice. Everything was nice, but it wasn't hair popping sharp. Now, before someone says, Scab, it's a chopper, I'm well aware of that. But Kukri's are some of the most multifunctional use knives out of there. I'm mentioning Matthew because he took in this video, if you go and watch this video, it's very quick, very brief. He took just a few minutes and honed it up and got it hair popping sharp. Now, that's important for this video, okay? It came with a good edge, a robust edge. Just wasn't like a, you know, a super sharp. But that's okay because one, we know we can sharpen it up, right? That's right, Scab. Two, this robust edge, what you're going to see in this video, guys, we kind of go ham right here. You've seen us processing up that wood in the, in the beginning. This thing, I got more and more and more impressed with it as I used it. Now, let me just say this. As it came, you sharpen up. It's going to take care of some common tasks. It's going to cut this water hose. Um, that little piece of oak you've seen a while ago, that's an old, old piece of oak, guys, and if you've done any kind of test with a knife on an old piece of the oak, you know it can be trying. You know what I'm saying? This knife, the more I used it, the better it got. Now, right here, we're going to do a little batoning. That's that old hackberry, son. It, it might as well be a brick bat, but let me say this. 5 sixteenths edge, edge, not the damn edge, 5 sixteenths spine. Very, very robust knife. Got right through here, no edge damage. None. Zero. And you know old Scab's going to slam it up and down, son, and do a backflip. Now, here's the thing, guys. Again, I love cold steel. I didn't name this knife because first thing people are going to say, it's not a gear I know that. I'm not, I'm not, you don't see Scab Ball in head of the cold steel marketing department. I get it. I didn't name it. Don't need to hear about it, okay? Love y'all. God bless you. God knows I do. Now, the other thing, though, guys, is this. One thing that I love about Cold Steel, they make tough, hard-use knives that you can use in your everyday life. Now, I mentioned this was a great all-around-use knife. It's a great bushcraft knife. Anybody want to argue, take it up with Blackie Thomas, who's a master woodsman and, and one of the most reputable guys in pathfinding, bushcrafting, he carries one every day. Now, you may have to tweak your edge on it. I think Grindy, uh, Grindy, Blackie, it's like I had a stroke, son. 
I think Blackie's got two, if not three different edge bevels on his for different tasks. Here's the John Peter stab test. This is where I was the most impressed with this knife. Now, it goes through four pieces of sidewall tire, okay? That was his old sidewall to my old Dodge 1500, El Diablo. I don't know that I've had a knife yet. Maybe one, maybe two, I'm not sure. And look right there, son. It's just a six inch punch. It's not a up over my head going crazy. Reverse grip, quick punch, bam. I don't know that I've got four clean yet. I may have, may be wrong. We're gonna do a zip tie test. We're gonna do this, maybe one or two more things at the stump and then we're going to the woods. Son, you gotta take this thing to the woods. Um, no problem with the zip ties. Guys, if you're new here, if this is one of your first videos with me, um, I set my videos up. If my voice gets on your nerves and, and I've been told it does by several people, you can turn down the narration, watch the knife work, and get a good idea of how it works. I do that on purpose. You can't fake the demonstrations we do. Now, I don't call them tests because nothing we do is scientific. We try to do stuff, we try to do everyday use, and I'll be the first to tell you, um, my skill set is novice at best. Uh, I'm getting more and more accustomed to kukris. I do seriously have four or five uh, handmade kukris from Nepal. You, you use them differently. You let the uh, blade do the work. I'm learning. But I like to tell people up front, hey, man, I'm a novice, okay? The reason we do the zip tie test is simply this. It simply makes sure it doesn't chip, roll, ding the edge. There are knives that, that those zip ties have done that. Now, they've cut through it, but it's kind of messed with that edge. So that's why we do that. We did the Donnie B all day throw it at the stump test the Donnie B all day drop test. Now D-Bad is marching to 10,000. If you're not subscribed to Donnie, please go over and do so. We're working on something uh, for his 10,000 that's going to be epic. I'm not gonna say a lot about it, except it's scab, it's D-Bad, it's epic. That's all you need to know. Now, right here, the owner of this property, these, this is the same swamp that me and Joe was in. Um, as I was walking down to the woods, the owner said, hey man, can I show you a couple things? He watches the channel. He needed a couple things. I said, sure, man. So again, for those of you that are new, we cut down hackberry, we cut vines, we cut palmettos. We stay away from oak unless it's fell. We stay away from pine trees unless it's fell. I, I try to be as much, to conserve as much as I can. Now, they're going to clear all this out over the next three to four years. I was talking to the owner today and it's a little bit longer project than I thought. Thank the Lord, that gives me more time out here. But of course, they're gonna put a damn neighborhood out here. Um, one thing I'd love to tell people, guys, and, and just a little side note, if property was a swamp and they slash pined it, built it up, and then they sold it and you're there putting your neighborhood on it, I hate to break it to you, it's going back to a swamp. Just letting you know, don't believe me, look it up. Now back to the knife, right here, is where I, I, the stab test really, I was like, holy crap. Now, I do the same test every day. Why? So you can see some uniformity. You can see the way a particular life knife may handle a particular task. I do try to add different things in it. I also do a bunch of shit off camera because I'm stupid that way. My apologies there. You'll note that throughout my videos. Now, Here's these old Florida vines. This is the one that Joe tried to take on with Carl's Katana. Now, this is a small one. You gotta hit these vines just right, okay? These are these old swamp vines, Florida vines. You get the right angle on them, there's nothing more fun. If you get a little off, or you got hands like I do, deflection can become an issue. This is where, and this, this is where I really, see right there, just a little bit of deflection. That's not the handle, that's my hands. That's what I've been telling you, I got busted up hands. But now you'll see a couple times as, as we go into this, I get a little frustrated there, but as we go into uh, more chopping in the woods, the longer we're in the swamp, guys, you're gonna see me adapt more and more uh, the style that's needed for the Kukri, where I let the Kukri do the work, less buoy type, type chops, okay? Um, sometimes, depending on what I'm chopping, I will do that hard straight down, just bang it just to test the edge. Out here today, 
honestly, what I was really trying to do is just work on my chopping form with a kukri. There's a form to it. Believe me, there is. Now, as far as this particular kukri goes, I love it. Let me tell you this. If you're going to get it, it's got a 5-inch handle. That Crayx, man, some people like it, some people don't. And that leads me to this. Knives are subjective, period, period. There's no know-all God in it, okay? If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Here's a few tips from Old Scabber. If it's sharp, it'll cut, it'll chop. If it's pointy, it'll stab. If it's got a nice, comfortable handle, it's for me. Those are the things I look for. The rest, you know, I, I like meat and potato knives. What you're going to see on my channel is highly functional knives. I am selective on what I choose. Now, as we go and my skill set grows, as my skill set grows, we'll take on some knives I don't like as much, but right now I like choppers or certain uh, mid-sized knives that I can handle to give you decent demonstrations. There's no point in me trying to take on a knife I don't like with this skill set. I, I just don't think it would serve you. I don't think it would serve the channel. Right here, again, these were just areas the owner wanted to make some trails. And what we do, guys, what I'll do for him is I'll go out and I'll clear some trails and then let the surveyors come through and things like that. Even though the surveyors cut their own paths and things like that, I just do it to kind of help them out and, and it gives me some good practice. The thing that I like the most about this particular Kukri, even though it's 24.3 ounces, it just swings fast. It's like it's light, it's fast. This is where I was talking about the robust edge, right through here. And you can see, you can see when I got the right um, angle, you can see it blows right through there. Now we just hit certain areas. It was good for clearing uh, brush, undergrowth, things like that. And, and I'll say this, if you are a, a, a outdoorsman, things like that, a good size kukri, it doesn't have to be massive. You can have somewhere from a, I don't know, an eight to 12 inch blade, whatever you're comfortable with can be all you need. It can be a machete, it can be a camp ax, it can be a knife, it can be a grubbing tool. It can be all sorts of whatever you need it to be. The only limitations you're gonna have with this particular knife is your skill set. And I know a lot of you guys are, are, are highly skilled. You tell me that all the time, so all I can do is believe you. Now, here's a little scab. Now, you will see some frustration uh, every now and then. I'll get a little serious every now and then. I mean, sometimes I swing and miss on purpose, lure that vine into a false sense of security, and then lower the boom. And then sometimes my eye floats. Y'all all know I'm wop-eyed. There's, there's no hiding that. Right here, and, and here's the thing, and, and Joe can attest to this in the comments. There's not many places on this planet that's more fun to swing a blade than a swamp, a Florida swamp, a Northeast Florida swamp near my house. I just, I love it. I love getting out there. I love clearing land. I love clearing the vines. And again, we take hackberry, vines, and palmettos. We leave oak and pine lawn. I'm a big believer in that. Now, if something's fell and I can use it, we dang sure use it, but we try to leave it. If they want to knock it down with a bulldozer, son, that ain't on me. Guys, listen. I, I I do love this knife. Now, we're not the damn QBC channel. You want to buy it, buy it. If you don't, don't. I would say shop this knife. I've seen it anywhere from $189 to $260 for the $40-34 steel. So please shop it. Listen, guys. Along with, with Matthew's video. I'm going to link another video. It was the video I made yesterday at Soldiers Freedom Outdoors. That video is important to me. And here's the thing, guys. I know you guys are here for the knives, my dashing good looks and melodious tones. I know that. I know that. But guys, please share that, that video. It's Florida. What is Florida Hunt 8 at Soldiers Freedom Outdoors? Veterans are on my heart. I'm not a vet. Y'all know that but veterans causes are. Please share that video. The, the thing is this, this video, this particular video here, this Cold Steel video, will have more views on it in the first two hours than that video's had in a day and a half. I'm begging you, share that video. I don't do that often. I don't, you Hit like, subscribe, all that you want. I, if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. 
but please share that video. Well, listen, guys, I love y'all. This, this was a fun one. These past few videos have been fun. I got some coming up from Timbo437. JR sent me this, so JR, mad props to you. Isaac the Noob, I got some knives from him coming up. My boy Mikey says, everything's going to be all right. I'm scabbed. You're not, and I'm gone, son.